Christian. When I became a Christian, as I said, I went to a meeting here feeling a bit down there one day after a heavy weekend on the old booze and drugs for the boys. And uh, when they started praying, I heard them all praying in these funny languages. And when they started doing that, I felt this rush happening through me. And I started shaking. And so the scripture says that tongues is for a sign to them that don't believe. So for me as a non-believer, it affected me. And of course it's the same thing that happened in the day of Pentecost. In the book of Acts chapter 2, it talks about the all of receiving the gift of tongues and speaking out in tongues and prophesying interpretations I guess were happening and everybody out there heard all of this happening and they got pricked in their hearts Peter who denied the Lord three times suddenly found a voice and he got up and started preaching and told them that they inadvertently crucified the Son of God on the cross And 3,000 people got pricked in the hearts. Now, at a point to note, modern church, is that they didn't send catches out there. They didn't put 3,000 catches behind all these people. They didn't say, oh, there's somebody out there with a sore head or somebody with a sore leg. He preached the gospel straight as it was. And they all got pricked in the heart, 3,000 of them, and they said, what shall we do? He didn't say, repeat after me this prayer of salvation he said repent be baptised and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit and so 3,000 got baptised on that day that's the message that's the message so when I got saved within the first few months the hell's angels decided that me and my brother ought to be killed so they sent up a contingent with a gun to shoot me and my brother. And so when they arrived, I met them on the main highway, north of Auckland, with my Bible. And they started shooting, and bullets were flying all over the place. That was my introduction to Christianity. Was I scared? No. See, back in those days, when God filled me with His Holy Spirit and I started speaking in tongues, I knew He was real. And I knew that He was in charge. I wanted to witness to my mates who used to be in the gangs and the angels. Of course, they wanted to shoot me. But out of that, the president of the Hells Angel that put the contract out on me and my brother, he got saved. I witnessed to him and he got saved, he got baptised, and he is now a minister in the Apostolic Church. In fact, it's his 60th in a couple of weeks. So, the reality for me is that he's real and that he's got my number. And as I said in the first series, start of this whole series, Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness God requires some believing to happen on your part the journey hasn't been easy for me and as you watch the rest of the series of these tapes I'll be able to tell you what I've gone through but at the end of the day regardless of what anyone goes through the issue is 
God's got your number. He says, He has ordained you, He has called you from the beginning of time. Ordained you, predestined you to be conformed from the image to the image of His Son, the firstborn among many brethren. That's the scripture in Romans 8, verse 28. You can have a look at it yourself. He predestined you. If you're predestined and you're listening to this, you just keep listening. Because I've got some messages to talk to you about. And if you watch all of these, something might make sense. See, I'm not interested in preaching to church people. Church people are the all the fancy preachers, the fancy churches, the fancy DVDs and CDs and all the books of all the fancy people. I don't believe that's where it's at. I'll preach in prisons. But in my prison in Auckland, New Zealand. They used to lock me up there for an hour with some real heavy dudes. Just me and my guitar and my Bible. Oh, I loved it. I was also locked in D block in some of the places where they had to take their prescription drugs to calm them down. I was locked in places with those guys. Preached the gospel. We hugged. We hugged. Prayed together, holding hands. See, God's real is not about tradition. It's not about rituals. It's not about ceremonies. It's not about all that other rubbish that we have. Churches around the place that are closing down. Massive big Anglican, Catholic, Methodist churches. Nobody going to them. Any time people go to them is when they have a death or they need to christen their kiddies or they get married or it might be Christmas or Easter or something. You think God's going to be happy with that? Not interested in preaching, preaching in places like that. See, my Lord, the one that I see in the Bible, and his name is Jesus Christ, was a radical. That means he's a non conformist. He didn't conform to the religious structure. Because his message wasn't the same. You see, man can take hold of the message and turn it into a man-made ritual. Well, that's what's happened. Full of pomp and religious jargon. At the end of the day, it's not about that. It's actually about heaven, eternity, truth, healing, Reality. What are we here for? What's it all about? What am I going to work for every day? Why do we get married? What's this big hole inside of me that can't be filled with anything? Nothing else can fill that big gap in your life. But the reality of God your Father. And that's it. God your Father. Our Father who art in heaven. He's your dad. So believers shall speak in new tongues it says. 
A lot of churches have lifted out of their uh, manual. Even a lot of the charismatic churches don't even give time for tongues and interpretation and prophecy. You've got to write your prophecy on a bit of paper and take it up. Now that's not the Bible pattern, that's not the pattern that Paul was talking about. They do all the airy fairy gifts instead of the real ones that come straight out and designed for unbelievers. satisfied with what you've got down here for there's nothing it's like the flower on the grass the grass wilts the flower dies the wind blows it takes the flower away that is your life enter into mine says the Lord for I am the way the truth and the life he that believes in me shall never die says the Lord now you see that's tongues and interpretation. You go and Google it. You Google it and see whether what I said wasn't what I said it was. God's real. He's real. <laughs> <laughs> 